Hello and welcome to ECMATH. I'm Mr. Eck and today we're going to be talking about polynomials. Polynomials are one of these types of objects in math that we just see over and over and over again, so it's important to get down the basic vocabulary and how they work, and that's what we're going to do today. So a polynomial is a type of expression that has some numbers, some variables, some exponents, and some operations, and, and then more. Uh, and you can have super big polynomials, you can have super small polynomials, all different kinds. The different uh, pieces of a polynomial each have different names, and we're going to look at them. So the initial chunks right here, each of these, these are called the terms of a polynomial. That's a term, there's a term, that's a term. So this polynomial has four terms. You know you're looking at a specific term of a polynomial because it's separated from the others by an operation, like a plus or a minus. The term of the polynomial that has the highest exponent of x is called the leading term. It's usually written in front, but it doesn't have to be. Um, but in its convention, we write the leading term in front uh, because it has the highest exponent. Then the term that we write at the end has no variable at all, and we call that the constant term because it doesn't change if x were to change. The numbers in front of each term, so this 3, 2, uh, 72, and technically this 14, are called the coefficients. And the specific coefficient of the leading term is called the leading coefficient. The final piece of each term is the size of that exponent that's attached to the term, that's attached to the variable, and there they are. Uh, the size of that is called the degree. So this 10 means this is the degree 10 term. Here, I'll just circle it. That's the degree 8 term. This 72x, its degree is 1 because that's an x to the 1. And this constant term, the degree of the constant term, is 0 because there's a hidden x to the 0 at the end that we don't usually write. So every term has a degree. And we can talk about specific terms by their degree. But we also have a degree of the entire polynomial. And that is the highest degree of all the terms. Not combined together, but just the highest degree. So that the leading term with the highest exponent was degree 10. So we would say that this is a degree... 10 polynomial. I'll just write poly. It's very important to be able to be able to identify that leading coefficient and that degree because those are the two things that are the most important when determining the general shape of the graphs of these objects. There's a couple more rules about uh, polynomials. First rule, the exponents attached to the variables must be whole numbers. That is 0, 1, 2, etc. Uh, no negative exponents, no fractional exponents, and the only time you'll have a zero exponent is on, again, that constant term with x to the zero. Otherwise, whole number exponents, and they, again, are usually arranged in descending order of exponents, but it's not required. The coefficients of the polynomial, again, that's the, the 3, the 2.5, uh, and the 72, and the 14. Those can be any real number. Remember, real numbers are basically anything you can find on a number line, including things like pi. The only thing that you can't have as a coefficient is something like uh, an imaginary number. But otherwise, anything is allowed for the coefficients. Now, if you find yourself doing something like pi x squared, you're having a pretty bad day, but it's technically a polynomial. So now that we know what a polynomial is, let's talk about what we do with them. And the main thing we do with them is operations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and not in this video, but eventually dividing all of these polynomials by each other. Uh, so let's get right into subtracting, and subtracting works the same as adding, so we're only going to do one. Um, basically, you look for like terms, that is terms with the same degree, and those are the terms you're going to combine. Um, here we're subtracting a polynomial, and so the first thing that we have to do is distribute this negative sign to both terms and rewrite, and so that's what I'll do now. <laughs> And 
And then we're going to combine these two like terms, minus 3x minus 3x combines to give us minus 6x. Nothing else combines because they have unlike exponents. We do have to, again, watch out for that. We distributed a negative to the negative 5, and it became a plus 5. Where's my pen? And there we are. The next thing you might have to do with two polynomials is multiply them together. And what's important to remember when multiplying polynomials is that you have to use the distributive property. That means each part of the first polynomial must be multiplied to each part of the second polynomial. And it helps to follow an organized process. So uh, sometimes math teachers call this FOIL, which stands for first, outer, inner, last. I like to just call it distributing. Um, what we're going to do is look at the x um, and draw a little arrow to make sure that that x goes to the 2x giving us 2x squared. And then let's make sure that x also travels to the 7. So that will give us a plus 7x. Then we take our 5 and make sure that goes to the 2x. So that will give us a plus 10x. And make sure that 5 also goes to the 7. And we get a 35. Then there's always going to be two terms that sort of combine uh, with each other. I mean, if we have the same variables going on. I uh, usually call those the middle terms, so we'll combine those to make 17x, and we copy the rest down too. And that's multiplying our polynomials. Now, this is great, this kind of drawing the arrows everywhere is great when you have uh, a binomial times a binomial, binomial with, with two terms. But what if you have a binomial times a trinomial? I want to show you, and you've maybe seen this before, uh, how to multiply using a box. It's just nice when you start to get a lot of terms. So you just draw a rectangle like this, um, or a, a table. You don't have to make a whole rectangle. And you put the terms of one of your polynomials here. So we have x plus 1. And I put another part up here, the terms of the longer polynomial, x squared plus 5x minus 4, and then we just treat this like a table. We'll be multiplying the rows by the columns. So I'm going to do that here. And then we have to add all the terms up. One neat observation is, unless you're missing terms in the polynomials, Often the terms that are going to combine with each other are arranged along a diagonal, so that's an easy way to look for them. It's not always true, but it's just easy. Uh, so here we'll have an x cubed. 5 plus 1 is 6. A 5 minus 1 is 1, so we'll just write plus x. And we'll do minus 4. So that's multiplying with the box. Really helpful when things start to get big. It takes a little longer. Um, you pick your poison. As long as you are able to safely multiply two polynomials, you can use any method you like. We're going to close today's video by talking about two special patterns. Mathematics is all about seeing patterns to save time and energy. And there are two things right here that you're going to see all the time. Uh, so say you had something like a polynomial 2x plus 3 whole quantity squared. The first thing that you need to avoid or remember is that it is not 2x squared plus 3 squared never has, never will be. Um, instead, you want to think about that as 2x plus 3 times itself. That's what squaring means. And we're going to follow the uh, distributive property. So you get a 4x squared, and we do the 3 and a 2x, and we get a 6x. And we get to do a 2x and a 3, and we get another 6x. And it's interesting that those middle terms match up. And then we do the 3 and the 3, and we get a 9. And when we combine those, we get a 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. So what's the pattern to see here? Well, the first term, even though it has two things, both 4 and x squared is a perfect square. And so is 9. 9 is a perfect square. I'll just draw an arrow. And then the 12x is... 2 times something. In this case, that happens to be 6x. So when you see a three-term polynomial, and the first and last terms are squared, and the middle term is double something, 
It is possible, though not always true, that you're looking at a perfect square, which can really save you a lot of time when you're multiplying and when you're factoring these polynomials. The other pattern that we see, maybe even more than perfect squares, is difference of squares or conjugate pairs. A conjugate pair is when you have two polynomials and you're multiplying them together and they're almost exactly the same except they differ by a sign. You have one positive sign and one negative sign. Let's see what happens when we multiply these out with the distributive property. So we do the 8y times the 8y and we get 64y squared. And then we'll let's do negative 1 times 8y and we get minus 8y. But then we do 8y and 1 and we get plus 8y. And we do minus 1 times uh, 1 and we get minus 1. And look at what happened to the middle terms. They're going to cancel out with each other. They're going to, uh, you know, add uh, 8 minus 8 gives you 0. And so this effectively simplifies to 64y squared minus 1. And this is why this is called a difference of squares pattern, because 64 is a perfect square. y squared is a perfect square. 1 is a perfect square right? 1 is 1 squared. And the negative sign in the middle is a difference. Difference is our word for subtraction. So anytime you see conjugate pairs, that is the same polynomial, but one sign different, it's going to multiply to this difference of squares pattern. And broadly, we could write for difference of squares that a plus b times a minus b gives you a squared the middle terms cancel out, difference, b squared. And that's always going to be true anytime you have that pattern, whether you're multiplying or you're factoring, incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, I forgot to do that for the perfect squares pattern, doing it with letters, so let's do that now. Let's just write out what the pattern is if I have a plus b quantity squared. Um, well, then I'm going to do, I'm going to get an a squared, and then it's going to be plus 2ab, because I'll get ab plus ab, and then plus b squared. So anytime you see something that's of that form, and that middle term has twice uh, ab, whatever a and b are, you're looking at a perfect square pattern. All right, folks, thanks for watching. We'll zoom out so you can see everything in one. I hope you got all that in your notes. Uh, feel free to go back and rewatch any segments you need to. You can always ask me your questions uh, online or in class. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.